Welcome back to Big Board. So for all you guys digging the elephant combat and the carnage, here's a little more for you. Uh, we're playing Alexander the Great, doing the Raffia uh, the battle, 217 BC, etc. You should know all about that. If you don't, go read a book. It's going to be fab. What we've got here on the first row of uh, cohesion hits on the Indian elephants, and on this row here, the first round of hits on the African elephants, which were incurred from making a troop quality roll or a morale check against the uh, ratings here, the sixes and the fives. Everything, any, anything over your number, you add cohesion hits to yourself, and when you roll a nine and you have a troop quality of five, that's a bad thing. So they, we go into the combat, and <clears throat> the way this works is, as I think, have I explained this before? Probably haven't. But the way this is going to work when you're playing the full game here is that we pull charts out so I can refer to them. And that way I won't sound like a complete ass. Or I'll sound like less of an ass. So, first thing we do, we've done our troop quality check and then we're going to look at the Clash of Spears chart. And because they're all elephants, they all fight on the same column. So they're all going to fight on or resolve on the seven column of the shot combat results table. And so we already know that just because we looked it up and there it is. You know, look here, there you go, right? Table seven, elephant versus elephant. Great. And what we do then is <clears throat> go to, well, who's got superiority in the combat? Who's got the shock superiority? Ah, okay, well, here's where it gets really specifically interesting when you're doing Indian elephants versus African elephants. It depends on who's attacking. If the Indian elephants were attacking the African elephants, well, boom, you get a uh, automatic attack superiority, which is really good when we come to roll the results, and we'll talk about it in just one sec. So keep that in your tiny little mind. And then we, but what doesn't happen is when the African elephants attack the little dingle, the bigger uh, Indian elephants, there, interestingly enough, there is no attack superiority uh, adjustment based on how the rules are written. And this camera is so close to falling out of its frame. How exciting. So uh, when we look at the shock superiority chart, and I will uh, now move this camera yet again, tempting fate, you'll see that there's a double asterisk here, elephant versus elephant. And the uh, little thing here says it's uh, attack superior if the Indian elephants are attacking African elephants. Right? It doesn't say that it's attack, it's defender superior when it's Indian elephants defending against African elephants. Boom! We've got a little hole in the rules. Thanks for playing. So that's why we restarted the game and we are attacking these guys first because what's going to happen is when I'm, because I'm attacking and not being attacked, I'm not going to get double damage when I'm attacked. It's important. Double damage is bad. So, especially when you only have five steps to lose. So, we roll for all of the results, and here's all the results that we got. Uh, these guys got 2-2, two, two, and on the seven column, unless you roll a nine, uh, sorry, an eight or a nine, all the results are going to be two step losses, two TQ uh, morale losses, or what they call cohesion hit losses, for the attacker, and then three and four for the defender, and then when you roll the other way, zero or one, then uh, that pops up, uh, that you, the defender still loses two, and the attacker will lose an additional one. So that's why we've got two, 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 one. Why is that one there? There is no one. Oh, that is correct because it's not correct. Dang it. Let's do. And so, but, and then of course here you can see, well, these guys lost four, these guys lost four, and all these guys lost two, and this guy lost three. So I rolled an eight, an eight, and a nine there, and all the others were whatever they were. So we're now going to have to do the fantastic enraged elephants, but the food is ready in the oven, and I'll be right back. We'll talk to you soon. We'll part two, part two, or I'll pause or something. Right, I'm back. So... What we now have to do is to kind of deal with all this rampaging business. And a rampage occurs when an elephant routes. So the routing elephant is going to be these guys, these guys, these guys, these guys, and these guys. And so what I did was I rolled a die to randomize who was going to go first. You can just do it <coughs> how you would, uh, how you resolve everything else, which is going across systematically. <coughs> Excuse me. 
go from left to right. But I think it's a little more fun to randomize it, and uh, it really does make a difference who goes, f who who rampages first here, because you resolve all of the rampaging for one elephant, and if it causes another elephant to rampage, well, then you have to go deal with it as well. And so these things all kind of they kind of cascade into each other, and it becomes quite hilarious. So uh, randomizing it is a is an option that will. Uh, stop us from getting any sort of blitzkriegy little effects where I would say, oh, I want to do this guy first because I know that it'll affect everybody else. So now we're doing this guy. And I will start another video and we'll talk about Rampages because it gets involved quickly and I will no doubt make mistakes. Later, let the Rampage begin.